Hello guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. A very good morning to all of you and let's begin today's day with some meaningful activity. Before beginning this video, I would like to pray for all of you, all the viewers of mine who are watching me right now that you and your family stay safe in the midst of this crisis. On that note, let's begin today's video. Guys, if you are coming for the first time, then do not forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get the instant updates about the new uploads that we make on our channel. Also, you can join this Telegram group where we provide you with the free quizzes as well as you can directly connect with your mentors for resolving your queries. So, if you want to directly connect with us, then you can join this group by clicking the link in the description below. So this is our new course for 2022, uh, RDI Grade B 2022 course. So I will be giving you a brief introduction of this course and then we will be moving ahead with this video. So guys, this course comprises of mock tests, video lectures as well as PDFs that, which are downloadable. And the mock tests are provided by keeping in mind the new pattern of RDI, that is 50% descriptive. Apart from this, the bonus here is that you will get the mock interviews assistance from our site. We will be conducting mock interviews so that you can be prepared for the interviews as well. Apart from this, the key feature of our course is the new book kit that we will be sending at your pace if you enroll in this course. And this book kit comprises of phase 1 question bank, phase 2 question bank, phase 2 revision booklet, phase 1 and 2 past year papers starting from 2010 onwards and a notebook and a pen. So these are some of the uh, goodies or books I would say that you will get if you enroll in this course. Now if you want to enroll in this course then we are running a 30% discount on it that you can avail by using RDI 30 coupon code. If you want to enroll in this course then you can use this code and in case you have any kind of queries related to the course or related to the syllabus, anything else related to the examination then you can give us a call at this number which is right in front of your screen. Okay, so that was the introduction. I hope that you have understood what we are offering you for the upcoming examination. But in case if you have any queries, then do feel free to ask us uh, on the number. Okay, so let's begin today's video with the first question that is, where is the auto scholarship program launched? So you have five options, Maharashtra, Tripura, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal and Manipur. Out of these five options, the right answer is option B, that is Tripura. So guys, under this scheme, basically this is a micro scholarship scheme and the purpose of launching this scheme is to encourage the students at the micro level, that is at the school level, so that they can improve their outcomes. Basically, they can improve their learning outcomes. So how will this scholarship work? This scholarship will provide rupees 1000 to the students who perform well and achieve the targets given to them. So in this manner, their learning outcomes will be improved by encouraging them uh, of this uh, through this scholarship. And this monthly amount of rupees thousand will be credited to the account of their parents. So that was an obvious thing. The point here that you should remember is that the amount is rupees thousand and it has been launched in Tripura. Apart from this, it is the world's first micro level scholarship program, micro scholarship program, not micro level scholarship program. But guys, this is this world's first micro scholarship program is a contentious part here because not many newspapers are claiming it. It is just one website that I found where it was written that it is the world's first scholarship, micro scholarship program being granted to the school students. But this is something con that is contentious because it has not been verified by official newspapers. That, why, that, why, uh, that is why I said that it is being claimed by the or also uh, uh, Aurobindo Society by the Shri Aurobindo Society that's, that has launched this Aura Scholarship program. So here are the points that you have to remember is that 1000 rupees scholarship, Shri Aurobindo Society and the mobile application. So these are the three keywords through which you can memorize this program. 1000 rupees is the amount, Tripura is the state, Shri Aurobindo Society is the provider of this scholarship as well as the application that has been launched by this Shri Aurobindo Society only for providing the test to the student. So if the student is able to overcome or achieve targets through those quizzes, then he or she will be entitled to a scholarship of Rs. 1000 and this scholarship will be provided at a tenure of a month. So these are some programs, uh, these are some components of this program. So I hope that you have understood this theme well, but in case if you have any queries related to this question, feel free to ask us in the comment section below. 
So now we are moving on to our second question. Online sales accounted for dash percentage of the total retail sales in 2020. According to the UNC tax estimates of global e-commerce 2019 and preliminary assessment of COVID-19 impact on on online retail 2020 report. So guys, this is a new report that has been released by UNC tax and this report assesses the online retail sales sector. So according to this report, the online sales account for 19% of the total retail sales in 2020. So here our answer is option A, that is 19%. So guys, this is an increment of 3% over the previous year. So in the previous year, this percentage was 16%. And now it has increased to 19%. And this increment can be attributed to the pandemic because of this pandemic being prevalent, uh, many retailers have switched on to the online platforms and that is why this online retail sector is booming in this time of COVID-19. Now what is this report tells us, what does this report has? That is something that we are going to discuss next. So this report is telling us that online sales accounted for 19% of the total retail sales and in 2019 this percentage was 16% and this increase can get to the pandemic. Now, in the next two points, we have two most important facts here. And the facts are that global e-commerce stood at 26.7 trillion in 2019, which is 30% of the global economic output. So this is again an important highlight here. This is the highlight of this report that global e-commerce sector is the new sector that is gaining so popularity that it accounts for 30% of the total global economic output. The next point of importance is that the gross merchandise value of the total uh, top 13 companies increased by 20.5% in 2019 to 20. And the total, term, the total amount in absolute terms is 2.9 trillion. So basically this is again a fact that you have to remember that the total uh, gross merchandise value of the top 13 companies has been increased by 20.5% and the absolute amount is 2.93. Which companies comprise this list of top 13 companies? So here is the list right in front of you, which is topped by Alibaba, the Chinese company. Now next we have Amazon, JT.com and etc. etc. So these are the top 13 companies, the top 13 business to consumer e-commerce companies by the by their gross merchandise value in 2020. So this is this list has been prepared on the basis of gross merchandise value of these companies. Okay, so the next point here is the countries. So which country is performing well in the e-commerce sector? This is something that we are going to discuss next from this report. Okay. So you have uh, the first point that top countries with highest share of online retail sales in 2020. And that list is stopped by South Korea. So remember that South Korea is the country that accounts for highest share of online retail sales. And it is followed by China, Britain and USA. So it is a slightly shocking fact that USA is at the fourth position in terms of online retail sales when, when it is the epicenter of technological revolution and innovation in etc. Et Apart from that, it is taking the fourth position. So the next point is the countries that have performed well in the entire e-commerce sales segment in the year 2019. At this time, it is stopped by USA. So we have USA, Japan, China, Korea and the UK in the top five leading countries. And let me tell you that India does not hold any position in the top 10 countries in terms of total e-commerce sales. So this is the list that we have got from the report only. Remember that India does not hold any position in the top 10. The next point here is in 2019 only in terms of B2C e-commerce sales, uh, China, US, UK, Japan and France are the top 5 countries and India holds 9th position. So this is the uh, next point and this point is very important because here India is holding a position so there can be a question on this only. Okay. So the next slide is the most sli important slide here because it is telling us about the facts related to India that are mentioned in this report. Now, if you see on the ninth number where India is placed, 
you can see different blocks here. So different information have been provided to you through this entire table. The first block is about the B2C e-commerce sales in terms of US billion dollars. And here India accounts for 61 US billion dollars B2C e-commerce sales. The share of B2C e-commerce sales in GDP is 2.1%. So B2C e-commerce sales is contributing 2.1% of India's GDP. This is a huge number, guys, a huge percentage, and uh, it is indicating the potential of this P2C e commerce sector in India as well. Apart from this, online shop shoppers in terms of millions is 70 million. So, 70 million people are shopping online in India, and this is 20% of the total people who are using internet. So, 20% of the internet users uh, do shopping online in India. So these are the facts related to India that were mentioned in this report and remember that these are for the year 2019 and not 2020. Now here this report ends. I hope that you have understood it well but in case if you have any doubt related to this report then you can mention it in the comment section. Okay, so this is a slightly easy question for us. What is the GDP forecast for India for FY22 by Goldman Sachs? And the right answer here is option B that is 11.1%. Who have been nominated as athlete ambassador for International Olympic Committee's Believe in Sports campaign? So here you have the five options out of which option A, P. V. Sindhu is the right answer. P. V. Sindhu along with Michelle Lee of Canada have been appointed as, as the athlete ambassadors of this Believe in Sports campaign. First of all, let me tell you that both P.V. Sindhu and Michelle Lee are badminton players and this Believe in Sports campaign aims to promote clean sports so that sports manipulation, competition manipulation can be avoided. So it aims to create awareness among the athletes, sports personalities, coaches and whoever is the stakeholder in the sports, uh, this campaign aims to create awareness among them. And this campaign, when was it launched? This might be the next question that could be coming in your mind. So this campaign was launched in the year 2018. So this is again an important fact that you should remember. Now guys, there is one, one other campaign also where P.D. Sindhu and Michelle Lee are partnering together. And that campaign is Badminton World's Federation's I Am Badminton campaign. So this campaign was launched last year only. And both P.D. Sindhu and Michelle Lee are the global ambassadors of this camp. So that was all about this news. I hope that you can remember the facts well. But now here I have a question for you guys. And my question is where is the headquarters of International Olympic Committee? This is your question. You have to mention in the comment section below. Next question is who has become the first women officer executive engineer uh, taking over as the officer commanding of a road construction company in BRO that is Border Roads Organization. Now, this question asks you that who has become the first woman uh, in the entire history of Border Roads Organization to take up the position of officer commanding in the roads construction company. So this is for the first time that is happening that a woman has taken up the position of officer commanding in BRO. Now, who is that woman is? So the right answer here is option C, Vishali S. And she belongs to Maharashtra. She's from Maharashtra. And she has become this first women office, executive office. Now, guys, who is the Director General of Border Roads Organization? It is Rajiv Chaudhary. So this is, again, an important designation in BRO that you should remember. Now, related to BRO, if you remember, we have discussed a project, project named Project Dadda, that we have discussed recently, some days back. So Project Dantak observed its 16th anniversary uh, in India. You have to tell me that this Project Dantak was launched in which country by India to develop road and connectivity in that country. So this is, I guess, a revision question for you guys and you would not have any difficulty in answering this question because I have told you the question, I have taught you this news as well. So tell me that in which country was this Project Dantak launched by India? So that was your next question for today. Okay, so the next question is, who, what is the cash price given under Satyajit Ray Lifetime Achievement Award for excellence in cinema? So basically, let me tell you that Satyajit Ray, uh, who was a very renowned filmmaker, writer and director, he has 
basically his 100th anniversary is being celebrated in 2021 and he was born in 1921 and he died in 1992 so his 100th anniversary is being observed now in order to observe that uh, 100th anniversary this satyajit three lifetime achievement award for excellence in cinema has been constituted and this award will be given at international film festival of india so this international film festival takes place in goa annually and the latest edition that we saw of this festival is the 51st edition remember this guys now this satyajit ray lifetime achievement award uh, for excellence in cinema will be given annually starting from this year onwards at this iffi and remember the amount that uh, is uh, provided under this award and that amount is rupees 10 lap along with the shawl a uh, uh, shawl would be there and other uh, ceremonies would be there that will be provided along with this award but the most important part is the amount that is we still like i remember that it is uh, it is going to be given at iff now we have talked about satyajit ray so let's have a look at this charismatic personality who created the character named feluda now if you are a regular follower of spotlight or if even if you are following the current affairs then you would know what felda is so felda basically is the indian version of shadow home so it, it is a detective character that was created by satyajit ray as you would know that he was also a writer so he created this felda character and it was very much in the news because one of the covid 19 test created in india was named after felda and that is why i took up this question so remember that feluda was created by satyajit ray now all the information related to this question related to this personality and here yeah, however he is such a charismatic personality that information on him could never end so if you want to uh, explore more about satyajit ray then you are uh, free to read about him uh, but as far as this question is concerned our information ends here so here the video also ends i hope that you have liked it and learned a lot during the video and if you have then do not forget to subscribe it subscribe the channel like this video and share it among your friends thank you so much for watching the video